So, um, let's get to the draft. Let's see how this lottery treats us this year. Here we go. Oh, Kelowna wins it. Let's go. Let's go. So, we have to take Charlie K. We have to. He's a high elite center. Playmaker. We got the K brothers. Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanios here. Welcome to episode number five of this NHL 21 Custom League Draft to Glory franchise mode here on my channel. I finally got it down now, guys. I can actually say it properly. It's taken me like four episodes to get to this point where I'm like, boom, 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 nail off the intro. If you guys do enjoy this video, please feel free to go down below, drop a like on the video. It really helps out the channel. It only takes a second. Also, if you do enjoy and haven't yet, YouTube's telling me 70% of you guys haven't subscribed to the channel. So if you haven't yet, go down below, hit that subscribe button. You won't regret it. And also turn on notifications so you never miss when these videos come out. So guys, last episode, I left you with the question of who should we draft with the third overall pick? We did kind of win the lottery, move down two picks with the worst record, like very much the worst record, 43 points. It's just absolutely terrible. But um, yeah, it was just a just a very low end season for the Comets. Um, 59 points for Eric Sider, you know, not terrible. He did shoot up a little bit. Uh, we did have some other player names uh, shoot up quite a bit. Uh, guys by the name of... Um, where is he? Guys by the name of Anthony, or not Anthony, Angelo Mackey. Um, and then in the system, I believe it was Declan Eudes. Yeah, Declan Eudes shot up the most, but I mean, so did Taylor Shea. Those guys both have NHL potential at this point still, and I would love to see them make the league eventually. Um, besides that, you know, some of these other guys not really off to crazy hot starts or anything like that. Like Zajac, I think we might be playing him in the league this year, but I'm not entirely sure still. Uh, still trying to make up my mind on that. And then Nicolition has kind of just been a... He, he put up a great season. Like, he had 40 and then 55 points in the last two years and just hasn't really grown, which is too bad because I thought he had some really good potential to make the league. So, guys, anyways, we're going to get to the draft here. Um, Before we do that, though, I need to go through some comments that you guys left me. And uh, there was a couple really good ones here from the last episode. So guys, there's a couple hi highlighted comments here I want to go over. The first one came from Duke Storm saying, yes, please do the full 25 seasons. I'm planning on it, and uh, I hope you guys are looking forward to that. We are going to be trying to do the entire franchise mode here, and it should be a fun grind. Um, I know that for the first, like eight to ten seasons the team is really going to be like borderline worst team in the league all the time so that's what makes draft glory nice we get through a lot of the first half of the franchise mode and then get to highlight the second half more so um the other comment that duke storm had here was he said take the high elite player without a doubt and then arvid bergren also seconded that saying take jason k so if we go down and look at the uh draft class here jason k the third prospect or third ranking prospect in the draft six foot three 210 uh pounds 18 years old shoots right on the left wing like we have to take this guy he just looks so so good um and then the other comment here came from uh cool cucumber saying draft more centers and defense to build your team core around especially if you can get later round steals centers can always play on the wing if necessary so that's a good comment um because i did go through and scout out some centers that you know maybe we'll take maybe we won't uh obviously the first round is a bit of a write-off because we don't get too many shots at guys there but, you know, a couple defensemen, a couple different players in here where it's like, okay, this guy could be good. I, ho I hope these guys are all going to be good. But uh, I do want to, there is a high elite goalie in here, I believe, as well, too. Yeah, uh, Kim Whiting looks like he could be an absolutely fantastic goaltender for the future. Um, there was a center in here, too, that I was quite uh, set on. I'm not, you know, not guaranteed potential, but looks really good, uh, even though he is 20. Brennan Hamannick, um looks like he could be really good, uh, especially since he's a sniper. So that's something this team really needs is snipers. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm going to get to the draft here right away, guys. And uh, let's see how it goes. All right, guys. So we are starting off the draft here and let's see how things go. 
So I'm just going to pull up my draft sheets here quickly. The Prowlers have the first overall pick, so they should more than likely be taking, um, what's his name, Rich Vernon. I would assume he goes first overall, and yes, he does. All right, so a 78-rated offensive franchise defenseman. Um, yeah, he's going to be sick in the future, and I wish we could have gotten our hands on him, but man, look at the points he put up to, 93 points in just 68 games. Like, that's insane. All right, so um, I believe Calgary is going to take uh, Russell D'Angelo here. Um, I mean, when you're a center slash left wing sniper and put up that many points, 107, um, yeah, you would expect that he's going to go high. I mean, 91 points on Jason K too, but we'll see if he goes. He should go second or overall. If he doesn't for some reason, I would be glad to take him, but let's see what happens here. So um second overall pick for calgary is russell d'angelo Ooh, he's 80 overall too oh my goodness yeah he's uh he's a very nice pick and um yeah gonna be a good one for calgary in the future i don't know how the flames won him too anyways we're gonna take jason k from the hamilton bulldogs um actually not one of your player requested guys i think some subscriber commented um another player by the name of k you will see that coming up here soon by the end of this video but uh, we're gonna take jason k right now okay 77 overall not terrible not great but good potential there and oh my god johnson was insane oh man 83 overall oh the kingston kings are gonna love that pick Whew. dang that is a really nice pick and anisimov was 80 overall too Man, what a draft this is here. Like, this is oh, Bolesky, too. Jeez, buddy. Shane Wright goes to the Hamilton uh, Tigers there. Umberger to the Stags. Stags? No, the Red Deer Deer. And, I, yeah, that was, a, that was an insane lottery. So we're going to sim over to pick 33. Um, not entirely sure who we're going to take here yet, but let's see how the rest of this round went. Lidecker, oh, my goodness, man. What a dra and Almquist too, man. I wish we could have more than one first round pick. Oh man, this was and Vanninen as well. It was just ah oh, man, come on. Like if there was one year to have, oh my gosh, if there's one year to have more than one first round pick. This was the year. Jeez, like literally like two players that aren't like top end NHL potential here. That's insane. That was such a good draft. Oh my god. Like just good first round anyways. Um uh I think I'm going to go. Yeah, I want to go with Tristan Leno here. Um he's one of the few guys I actually had pinned where I was like, "Yes, we're taking this guy next." Um and then you can see I've got these other three guys or other two guys in here. Um we're going to wing a couple picks this draft too, so just warning you guys of that. So I'm probably going to make some bad decisions, but anyways, uh Tristan Leno, 60 overall, you know, not like 70 overall, I wish he was, but, uh, you know, 60 overall, 18 years old, two-way defenseman, we finally don't get a defensive defenseman, so that's always nice, um, and then let's see who else goes in here that was really good, so Bendahan was not very good, um, Toivonen was actually a really nice pick, again, for the Prowlers, they get another great player, man, the Prowlers are killing it this draft, I have to say, um, Second round looking a lot weaker, but Burkoff was a elite goalie. Um, it's all right. I'd, I'd rather let Burkoff get picked and then we get our hands on a slightly higher potential goalie um, in this upcoming round. So we got pick 65 here. Nobody like really like stuck out to me until um, Kim Whiting. So that is the guy we're going to go with. I've got him pinned here. And I'm praying to God that he's a high elite. I mean, if he's a high starter, still a pretty good pick. But let's go. Okay, okay, so we get two high elite players in this draft, um, so that's really nice. Doesn't usually go like that, honestly, and uh, yeah, that's a great pick there. So over to pick 97 now, um, going to see a nice medium top six sniper in Russell Sanchez go there, 20 years old. The 20-year-olds have been really good this draft so far, that's what I'm noticing. Um, so we'll see if that trend continues or what's going to happen there, but, uh, not a great third round overall. Usually the third round has one or two more steals, but let's see how the fourth round goes here. Uh, we got the first pick in the fourth round, but I am going way the hell off the board because I want a sniping center. And I know this guy's 20 years old, but I'm taking the risk on Brennan Hamannick. And does he turn out to be elite? 
Yes, he does. Let's go. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we are absolutely crushing it here again. The older players are turning out to be fantastic, and uh, Brennan Hamannick probably going to go into the AHL immediately here. Uh, so yeah, that's a fantastic pick. Let's see how the next round goes here. Um, not much overall, honestly. Yeah, not a great draft or great round there. Oh, okay. No, was 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 Newski? Yeah, Julian was Newski to the Quebec Nordiques, an elite playmaking winger. Okay, that's a that's a very nice pick as well. So yeah, Julian was Newski, the other kind of steal in that fourth round. Um, so on to our next kind of set of picks here. I was looking at Bob Hatcher, but I just I don't know like the. I'm a little, little worrisome on him, um, but this guy, I don't know why, but I'm just feeling the 20-year-olds this draft, which sounds really bad when I say it out loud, but um, like there aren't too many other 20-year-old prospects in here as you go down the list, like Janssen is a player. I'm looking for a goalie at this point because we've taken, well, I guess we took Widen, but um, no, I'm feeling... I kind of want to go with Weinrich. Um, I don't know who else we'd even go with. Um, yeah, let me go with Weinrich, see how he turns out. Um, so this is a wing it pick, and... <laughs> oh my god, guys, I'm the lucky... I swear, I'm the luckiest franchise mode youtuber sometimes like this is ridiculous that is just such a steal that's so lucky too because he was listed as a medium starter i'm like i'll take a medium starter in the fifth round because at least i'm you know almost certain that he's going to be a medium starter uh but no a medium elite 20 year old goalie tristan weinrich just looks absolutely awesome as well so uh over to pick number 161 now let's see how the rest of this round goes and yikes um so Ramsey was not a great goalie. Hatcher was not okay. We definitely made the right pick there. Um, and all right, that was it. So um, we've taken one center so far in this draft. I kind of want to take the just... We don't have a scouting report on Garcia. Uh, oh my God, the next one is until Kulikov. Uh, I don't trust that. That's really... Uh, <sighs> You guys might hate me, but I'm going to take a shot in the dark. Um, this is not a great tactic. I don't recommend you ever do this, but we're going to send it. Um, Billy Garcia, why not? Um, literally have no scouting report on him. He's supposedly listed by the previous scouting as 177, but he's moved up to 162. So I'm, you know, I'm taking the rank movement as upward as that he's going to be good. Um, so that's what I'm hoping for. No idea if he's going to turn out, but I'm just taking the best center on the board, going with uh, Cool Cucumber's comment there to try and get later around centers and defense. And... Oh my God. Wait, oh my God, he's 62 overall? Are you... <laughs> You're kidding me. Oh my goodness, Billy Garcia might be the steal of this series. 2A forward, 18 years old, 62 overall. The last guy that we drafted that was 62 overall at 18 years old that wasn't a goalie was Angelo Mackey, and he was from the U.S. League. That's why I like taking U.S. players is because sometimes they just turn out. Um, and yeah, Angelo Mackey got up to a 79 after one season. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, this draft has been absolutely awesome. Okay. Wow. Um, oh, Morozov. Okay. I mean, 20 year old goalie. Again, he turned out pretty well. Um, Mikhail Semen there. Pretty decent, actually, later round pick there for medium top nine forward. Uh, Kulikov. Okay. Would have been medium top nine as well. So not a bad center there either. Um, Vishnevsky was a nice pick. I mean, you know, low top six, but still. But still, not a bad pick. All right. And we got the last. Or the first pick of the last round, I guess, is how you'd say it. Um, I've taken so many goalies. I don't really want to take another one. Um, uh, I, uh, I kind of want to take another shot in the dark, but he's 19. 
like I said, guys, the 18, 19 year olds haven't really turned out as well this draft. The 20 year olds are like kind of the players to go with here by the looks of it. Um, Estrada's 19. Okay. All right, guys, so we're going to go with George Bednars here. Um, just a shot in the dark pick again, and he's okay. He's a medium seventh. So finally, we don't hit on a pick, but, you know, until the seventh round, to get six picks in a row like we did that were all, you know, decent, decent potential players, um, if not really good. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with this draft overall. I can't even be mad that we didn't get one player in George Bednars there. So, I mean, overall, it was a fantastic draft. I don't really care about the rest of the seventh round. I'm sure there was one or two steals in there, but what a prospect pool to walk away with. Jason K, Tristan Leno, Kim Whiting, Brennan Hamanick, Tristan Weinrich, and Billy Garcia is the highlight of that draft, I think. I mean, obviously, Jason K is going to make an impact a lot sooner, but man, if Garcia can grow, which I think we're going to put him in the AHL to do so, if he can grow oh my goodness, like, we're gonna have another great player on our hands, um, so yeah, anyways, now we're at the re-signing phase, and, uh, we got a lot of NHL coaches expiring here, a lot of coaches just in general expiring, so, I think what we're actually going to do now, um, I want to give one of these guys the head coach role, because Pedersen's gonna want, like, mid oh, Okay, never mind. He doesn't want millions of dollars, which is actually quite nice. I mean, it doesn't really matter because we just have to re-sign the coaches anyways. But, um, you know, we'll get all these guys re-signed. I'm not so worried about that. I'm more so just worried about, um, you know, one is the scouts because I've got a lot of scouts that are expiring. So I hope they all re-sign. Um, but the main issue I'm worried about here at this point is getting the right system fit for this team. Uh, because I do have to make a tough decision as far as the defensemen go here right away, as far as which system we're going to play, which guys we're going to try to let walk in RFA, uh, sheet offers, and so on. And I, I'm as much as I hate to say it, like our best defensive prospect right now in Angelo Mackey might be one of the guys walking, which I, I hate to say, but that might be how things go here. So um, let's go to our contracts to see what the issue is here well not what the issue is but what we have to do here with the contracts um eric cider up to an 85 overall not terrible not great but um you know he was our first ever pick he had to play through some really really bad seasons um and weston zajac i believe we are going to try and get him in the nhl this year i would like to get him up on like the second line or something along those lines um Honestly, a lot of these guys I'm very much considering just releasing. Um, I think I think I have to sign Jason K. He's a third overall pick, and we'll offer him the deal. I don't know if he's actually going to sign it, but uh, that's okay. I'm going to end up releasing a couple guys like Carter Rowney here um, just to clear up cap space more. Not cap space, but like roster space more than anything because I want Garcia. I want Leno, but Leno is going to go back to... Uh, Gatineau here for another year so that's okay um so we won't sign him I think I am going to sign Brennan Hamannick though and then we got goalies too which is the other awesome part is we got two elite goalies there um so I think the way we're going to do it is we're going to let Kim Whiting sit in uh Luella there for another year uh kind of reminds me of Walstead actually funny enough so yeah we'll let Whiting sit for another year um Lindgren can play backup this year. Walstead can start. I'm not re-signing Vickman because I did not actually draft him. <laughs> um, and then uh, what do I do here? I think I have to let Weinrich sit for another year. We'll go Manlow and Walstead in the AHL this year. Um, so yeah, that sounds good. We'll do... DeSmith wants no money, which is hilarious. He should really be taking more, and he isn't. Um, buddy, it's no salary cap. Like, what are you doing? You can literally see it says cap space not available down there. So, yeah, uh, not going to sign any new goalies or anything like that. Just going to re-sign DeSmith. As far as defensemen go, obviously, we have to re-sign Mark Giordano. We're going to offer him, like, an $8 million contract for one season because he's probably like, I want to win. I'm a better player than this. And we're like, yeah, we know, but uh, we kind of need you on the team here, Mark. So uh, 3 million for Felipe Meyer. That should be good for the next two seasons. Angelo Mackey is such an awesome defenseman. I'm so excited for him. Um, 
Brad Hunt probably going to be a walk-off at this point, uh, especially with Mackey coming into the team. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. Mackey's the sixth best defenseman. Jordy Ben can sit on the bench this year. And we got Gleason, Irwin, Kukan, Borgman, Simic, Shea, Abister. And, well, we have Moser down there too. But, yeah, defense looks about as good as it's going to get for now anyways. Um, right wingers, I will go and re-sign Frank Vetrano for about $2 bucks. Again, the money doesn't matter. It's more just the term. Kiefer Sherwood does want a contract renewal as well. So, again, $2 million for a year just to convince them even if the team is atrocious. Um, Alex Iafalo actually on a really great deal here for another season. And we've offered K a contract. Actually, how many centers do we have? So we got one, two, three, four. Pius Sutter's number five and Zajac's number six. So not exactly the most uh, flexible roster here. I think we are going to actually release a whole bunch of guys here right away. Um, Bozak said no. Which isn't great, um, but might be how we have to play it here. So let's see. Yeah, um, hmm. <laughs> we have too many left wingers as well. I want K in the team. So if he's starting and we have Kajula and Shiri as well, maybe I'll sign like Aston Reese, but I'm going to let Goudreau go. I'm going to let Belmar go. So there's a couple players released immediately there. Um, Aston Reese can move down to the minors if he has to. That's not a big deal for me. And uh, let's see, how is the right wing looking again? Right wing's actually looking pretty decent right now. Like we got three solid guys there. Um, so we could go out and sign a couple centers here. I'm not too worried about that. All right, so I want... Garcia and Douglas, or Garcia and Douglas, Garcia and Hamannick in the team this year um, for the AHL anyways. They're both American players, so I would very much like to get them into the team. So that's two centers right there. Um, then we got Douglas, so that's three centers in the AHL already. Um, so the only guys I think I'm going to re-sign here are going to be Kampf and Dowling. Those guys can both... Um, sign one year two ways here i believe as long as they take it no he's a one year one way so one and a half million should do the trick um and then we're gonna release no sec we're gonna release suomela we're gonna release Casilla, and it's cory conacher we'll re-sign cory conacher that's the only guy i'm gonna re-sign out of all the centers though um and then yeah that definitely narrows things down a bit um I get the feeling Travis or Travis Tyler Bozak is going to walk here. Even if we offer him like a $4 million contract for the next two seasons, I just get that feeling. So yeah, anyways, that's all the contracts I'm going to offer at the moment. So let's advance a day, see who signs, see who rejects. All right, so we get Steve Pedersen back as a coach. Very well might be firing him like immediately. Um, and yeah, here we go. So no nope okay no all the oh okay so we did get bozak back i think we got comp as well there uh we get giordano vetrano de smith sherwood myers dowling k signs with the team conacher hamannick garcia all right that was like quite literally everybody i forgot to offer sherry and uh kajula contracts so that was my fault um but we'll do three milli for Sherry this year and we'll do probably around the same for Kajula too. Yeah, okay. He might be three and a half million, but that's okay. Alright. Um so again, still just such small contracts overall that it's literally not gonna make a difference. Uh Ryan Kuffner, we will definitely offer a one year two way two. And those other three left wingers should be signing here right away. So let's see. Kajula definitely re-signed. Um Kuffner re-signed. And Connor Sherry has re-signed. You can all see it at the top. So yeah, Sherry, Kajula, Kuffner, nice and easy. No issues there whatsoever. And this team is essentially set to head into free agency at this point. All of these guys are, you know, hopefully going to be making impacts for the team moving forward. I, you know, I don't want this team to overperform. I don't want them to make the playoffs in our third season. We definitely need more picks still. Um, but, you know, we are starting to develop a couple prospects, which you love to see. And, uh, 
yeah, let's uh, let's get to free agency here, I think, unless Brad Hunt has like a really tight relationship with somebody who's huge. Hi, Eric Sider. All right. Oh, man. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Okay. He's best buds with Eric Sider. We have to re-sign him, so we'll do that. Um, any other expiring deals? Oh, Aston Reese, I did want to re-sign as well. Man, I've been I've been terrible for actually getting the right contracts out to the right guys here. So Aston Reese gets the offer. Those guys don't. All right, good to go. So Aston Reese does re-sign, and we are now editing the trade block. So um, shouldn't be anybody of value on there. Honestly, we're not trading anybody anyways, so... Cam Talbot did not resign with the team, but that is okay. Oh, no, don't sim to the next season. Ah, I definitely just advanced, yeah, five days. Oh, we just missed so many free agents. Shoot. Okay, um, honestly, I don't think there was too many guys that weren't, like, lottery picks in here, to be completely honest, but, uh, you never know. You never know who was an undrafted free agent. Um, Ilya Mikheyev might actually be a decent pickup. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with Ilya Mikheyev because he's so cheap and on it. Like, the money doesn't matter. It's literally just because he's undrafted. Um, who else could have been undrafted in here? Actually, let's go to uh, potential. Sort by potential, see if anybody decents in here. Doesn't look like it, so that's too bad. Um, usually there's like one or two guys that slip past the draft at this point. Doesn't, doesn't look like it. No, uh, not really anyways. Ty Smith... Oh man, why are you not re-signing guys like that? Those are those are really good players. Um, <laughs> man, that, that just sucks. Okay, anyways, really not too many guys here who I'm like, yes, we need to sign this guy. I think the team's in really good shape already. Um, I don't know if you guys have watched any of X Tech's older series, like X Tech Hockey. He has a lot of franchise mode, um, but he. <laughs> He had a series where Ty Ronin, Ronin was just going off in the playoffs. It was like the Seattle Thunder Bears or something like that. It was uh, That was a good series. But anyways, um, let's go and sim to the next season. Hopefully get Ilya Mikheyev, or Mikheyev, however you want me to say it. And he does sign. All right. Oh, he wants to be in a leadership role too. Perfect. All right. So I think we are a okay to go to the next season, get all the scouting done, get all that good jazz done and honestly the seasons take such a short amount of time to sim we might just simulate right through it too um that is a very very possible uh setup for this video so i i think that's how it's gonna go all right guys so this is what the lineup's looking like uh we're gonna go with kajula cider mikhaev on the top line we'll go i follow rodriguez and Suter sutter however you want to say his name on the second Shiri, Bozak, Vetrano on the third, and then Ryan, Aston Reese, and Achari on the fourth. Um, as far as defense goes, we're the only two good defensemen we have morale wise right now are Mark Giordano and Angelo Mackey. Um, so, not going to change up the system fit for another year, I think. Uh, we're going to let the team just be terrible. And uh, we got Hunt and Miller, and then Myers and Dylan there. And then on uh or in goal we got casey DeSmith and uh charlie lindgren so yeah pretty brutal team here still um but hopefully this will be our turnaround year where we actually win a lottery and things actually go well that's what i'm hoping for anyways so um in the AHL, we got a plus three on the top line there with Declan Eudes, who is shot up like crazy, uh, Bedrich Rechenik, who is a decent pick, and then Brandon or Brennan, sorry, Hamannik, who uh, again really good pick. Um, second line again more just crazy good prospects with Nikolishin, uh, Curtis Douglas, and Oliver Suni, and then we got Weidman, Garcia, and Kuffner on the third line, and then Sherov, Dowling, and Conacher on the fourth. On defense, we got Taylor Shea along with Troy Stetcher, who has dropped right off like a rock. Um, Dean Kukan along with Anthony Abister, and then Benjamin Gleason alongside Jordy Ben. So that is the system. Uh, that is the team. We got Jesper Wallstead with Emilio Manlo down there on uh, or in goal in the AHL. And that is how I'm leaving the teams for now. I'm not going to touch or adjust anything else. Um, 
it is nice to actually have a sniper in the team here. Finally, in Brennan Hamannick. Honestly, as much as I want to put um, Jason K and Weston Zajac into this team, they're available in the rosters. I could put them in over other guys here. I just don't see how that's going to help this team at this point. So, again, Giordano just... <sighs> there's no You don't want to be the captain of this team right now. And that's the thing is that this team is so freaking bad that they need another season or two before we even like pick out a leader where it's like that is the guy we're following and this is the guy that's going to lead us to a Stanley Cup eventually. We're not even close to that still. So, um I'm interested to see how the draft class turns out here. Um so Charlie K going to be the top prospect in this upcoming draft. This guy though, Quincy Torres. 11th overall prospect keep an eye on him guys he might turn out to be something special um i assume the majority of these guys are going to be very good players i would love to get charlie k to have the k brothers that was the, that was the player created uh was charlie k another guy in here um kyle langford another player where i'm like i would love to get my hands on this guy i don't know if we will but uh i, I would assume so if our team's going to be atrocious again but yeah should be an interesting draft class this year. Um, so yeah, that's how things are running. I'm going to uh, get some scouting done here, then sim to the preseason. Most of this is going to be off camera again and show you guys the team ratings and then go through the whole season. All right, so guys, here's kind of how the draft class is looking at the start of the season. Um, not too many actual guaranteed scouting reports, but... You know, Gabriel Letty actually looks like he could be a decent player. I'd like to take another sniper for a top six spot. It doesn't look like there's really any too many great defensemen in here. Tuka Rene, um, interesting name there. And then Justice Edwards, I don't even know yet, um, so we'll see there. Um, Calvin McBride is also NHL ready and Stamkos is only two years out. Okay, so yeah, it's a, it's going to be another strong draft here, most likely. Um, one year out on Artem Glebov there. So yeah, not too much of the draft really in focus yet, I think is how you could say it. Um, when Granowski, interesting looking player there. Dimitra, maybe, probably not, but um yeah definitely just still trying to figure everything out here as far as where players are going to go who's going to be the best selection at what pick and so on but um yeah anyways uh let me go show you guys the team ratings that you know Stuart booth could be interesting and by the looks of it we might be leaning more towards a shoot and pinch system here too especially if we don't win the number one pick um i might be taking a defenseman this year so that is very possible as well um especially yeah i mean i'd like to take a guy like langford too there's a lot of guys i'd like to take doesn't mean we're gonna have the opportunity to um tuka Rene is definitely a good backup option if we don't get a player that i'm looking for um so yeah anyways let's uh not go to the calendar i want to show you guys the actual team ratings here before we do the full season sim uh you know like diced in the video spliced in the video but um yeah, let's uh, let's take a quick peek at the Comets' overall ratings this season because they are going to be garbage. Um, yeah, so 88 defense, my guy, hey? 88? Are you sure about that? 85, 88, 81? 88 defense? What? Did all the morale reset? Or what happened here? Oh, yeah, it did. Okay, that's why. I'm like, 88? Excuse me? Like, there's not a crazy high defensive rating or anything, but, um, yeah, that's that was just strange. Um, <laughs> Honestly, we have so few defensemen, and Angelo Mackey actually looks like he's going to be awesome. Um, I might have to go for... A shoot and pinch system here actually even though we have Shea and Abister as pinch and cycle defensemen so 
yeah, anyways, that's how the team's looking. That's what everything's looking like up to this point. And I will be back with you guys at the end of the 2022-23 regular season. We just got offered Kyle Connor. Ha! <laughs> no way. Winnipeg was like, take Kyle Connor. Yeah, we don't want him. Get rid of him. What? It's Kyle Connor, my guy. I mean, if he was undrafted, hell yeah, I'd take him. But we can't make trades because it's draft to glory. But like, oh my god, what happened? Oh no, Eric Sider broke his leg. Oh, man. No. Come on, man. Eric Sider was having the best season of his career so far. And then snaps his leg. Are you kidding me? Come on, man. He had a 40-goal season. He was on pace for, like, 75 points. All right, so guys, at the end of the season simulation, the Comets end with a 32-46-4 record, placing them dead last in the Pacific, and not in a great spot, uh, but not dead last in the league either this year, which is a little bit different than what we're used to. So let's go check that out, see where they actually finished. Um, and actually, you know what, I should simulate one more day. I'm sorry, I, I, I was one day off um, because all these other teams have to play a game still. Uh, get her done, boys. There we go. All right, everybody's 82s across the board. Beautiful. All right. Uh, that's team scoring. Sure, let's let's go team scoring first. Um, so Eric Sider had 68 points in 75 games. Would have um, led the team in scoring had he not broken his leg at the end of the season, so he is out for a while, unfortunately. Um, Ilya Mikheyev scores 74 points in 82 games. Best season we have seen him put up anywhere and um yeah he he had a really good season uh, our goalies did not <laughs> um De smith got 22 wins and yeah let's go look at the entire league here so for goaltenders anyways devin dubnik in uh quebec puts up 44 wins tied with jordan biddington in gatineau so yeah those two those two goalies really had a good time um for league scoring, we see Patrick Kane and the Abbotsford Aces get 120 points. Nathan McKinnon gets 117. Jeremy Simons up to a 93 now at just 20 years old gets 115 points. Uh, a lot of other big names in there. Lots of guys scoring over 100 too. Raymond Tolusti. Oh my goodness, he has turned out to be a stud for Ottawa. That is insane. Um, yeah, wow. Okay, uh, where's the next player? Where Sergey taking off? That makes sense. Okay. God, like, uh, we could have taken Tlusti too, which is just, like, killer. That just sucks. So, yeah, um, anyways, that's your league scoring. A couple 70-goal scorers here, uh, but Jeremy Simon scores 72 goals. Ovechkin with 70, McKinnon with 70, and they're not even going to win the Rocket. That is just ridiculous. All right, for defenseman scoring, Kale McCarr puts up 104 points in just 80 games as well so he is very much looking like the uh, norris candidate right now and then for rookies we are going to see nicholas jonson put up a 60 point season 43 goals as well in his rookie campaign anton lindell great pick for the toronto maple leafs and he puts up a 54 point rookie season as well larry coopland another very nice player there for the kingston kings um yeah, Kingston had two absolutely fantastic rookies, uh, and Isimov was good. Who was the number one pick? It was Vernon, and he only put up 26 points. So yeah, um, Prince Albert did not have a great year, unfortunately. Um, Brad Lambert, again, just not great rookie years from a lot of guys that you'd expect to perform a little better, but it is what it is. That's why we didn't play a bunch of rookies in the league this year. Cause I was like, you know, they're going to have bad seasons and they're not going to grow. Why would I do that to another player besides Eric Sider? So anyways, the Catano gladiators win yet another president's trophy Quebec right on their butts there, but couldn't get it done. Um, and then we finish fifth last. So 28th in the league, Montreal, Hamilton, Oshawa, and medicine hat all below the Kelowna Comets there this year so strange season we got the fifth best lottery odds 
and it was a weird one this year. It was very strange, and uh, who knows what the lottery is going to hold. Um, if we win the draft lottery, I'm obviously taking Charlie K, but man, I'm not expecting it, and uh, I would honestly be down to take a defenseman at this point because we just haven't gotten a top-end lottery defenseman yet. And by the looks of it, the best player on the board, well, should be Edwards, and I don't think it is. I think it's actually Tukarine. Um, so I'm very tempted to take Tukarine. He is a shoot and pinch defenseman, um, and not the greatest overall. Probably he's probably gonna be like a 75, 76. But NHL ready. Um, the shoot and pinch fits with Angelo Mackey, so that's a system we could build around. Um, but let me know your comments or your guys' thoughts. If you think we should take him, what should we do? I'm honestly kind of confused on that still as to how this is gonna play out. Um, and then I am very interested in this guy, right? Well, there's two guys. Baldwin, I'm interested in, but even more so, I'm interested in Guy Valcourt because he is a one-year ETA sniper. As far as I can, you know, infer here, he's yeah, one year out, A plus shooting supposedly. I would love to pick him up just to get another sniper in this team, but I don't know if we're gonna land that pick or not. So, um, anyways, oh no, not edit player. Um, that's not what I wanted, but uh, Eric Sider should be like an 89 by now. He was having such a good year, and he, then he got injured, and it's, it sucks. Oh, I also forgot to show you guys a couple big things, um, mainly the AHL, because the AHL has gone off again this year. They are doing fantastic down there, and uh, yeah, Declan Hughes up to a 79, going to be in the NHL hopefully next season. Um, Bedrich Ratchnik up to a 75 now at 20 years old. He's looking great. Um, so yeah, there's definitely a lot of guys in here that could make the league over the next season or two. Taylor Shea, another one of those names where it's like, yes, let's get him in the team, right? Like, that's just how I feel at this point. Um, Jesper Wallstead up to a 68 as well. And then there's the system, which I haven't even showed you guys yet because we do have players that are still in the minors or still playing junior hockey. And uh, biggest name there, Weston Zajac, up to an 81 overall now at 20 years old. How many points did he put up? 74 points, 53 games. I assume he got injured. Um, that's just how it looks at this point. But uh, yeah, we'll definitely be bringing him into the NHL this upcoming year. Uh, besides that, I don't even know who else is unsigned. Uh, I guess Leno got up to a 63, so not spectacular from him. And yeah, that's the system. So, you know, Weston Zajac, the biggest name there, but that makes sense. He uh, he was expected to come into this team and make a difference. And honestly, I wouldn't be opposed to not winning the lottery and getting a decent pick. Um, you know you know what? I totally just simulated through our entire our team's entire playoff run here. So the uh, Burnaby Bolts are still in it, 47, 30, and 5 records. So really good record. Um, they are 1-3 and three and probably going to get eliminated immediately here. And yes, they do. All right. So that's a big rip for them. They uh, go out in round one again, so no extended player growth there, but that is okay. Declan Yudes was leading the team anyways. And yeah, let's get to the draft, see who wins the cup and the Calder, and go from there. So the Quebec Nordiques win the cup this year, and Utica, who the uh, Bolts lost to in the first round, win the cup. So let's go in here and uh, take a peek at the uh, awards and everything. All right, so actually first I'm going to show you guys the playoff brackets. Um, so the Nordiques go through, let's see, they went through the Highlanders in six, the Monarchs in six, the Senators in five, and then the Nailers in five to win the Stanley Cup. Um, the Comets go through Burnaby in the first round in five games, then uh, Syracuse in five, then Hershey in six, and then finally Texas in six to win the Calder. So those are your uh, your team winners there, your team awards there i guess um you can see the gladiators won the presidents again and yeah that looks about right all right so individual awards the art ross goes to patrick kane this year the heart memorial goes to um jeremy simons uh kale mccarr wins the norris which you know makes sense uh patrick kane with the lady bing too um Johnson there wins the calder that was not unexpected at all we were expecting him to do very well Kale McCarr wins the Conn Smythe for the Quebec Nordiques good for him Devin Dubnik with the Vesna in Quebec and then Dubnik and Grice both win the Jennings there as well that's insane um Trevor Van Riemsdyk with the Masterton this year 
Uh, Setaguchi or Moncton's coach wins the Jack Adams. Uh, Ryan O'Reilly wins the Selkie this year. And then the Ted Lindsay goes to Simons and the Rocket also goes to Simons. So Jeremy Simons grabbing a whole bunch of awards there. He gets three awards. So yeah, good for him. Man, if we had just won that lottery in the first season, that would have been insane. So um, let's get to the draft. Let's see how this lottery treats us this year. Here we go. Go, oh, Kelowna wins it. Let's go. Let's go. So we have to take Charlie K. We have to. He's a high elite center. Playmaker. We got the K brothers. Oh my gosh. Everything's going to be okay in Kelowna. <laughs> no way we did. Did we? <laughs> oh, Montreal. And Medicine Hat. Montreal has two top six picks. Oh my god, the Canadians are going to be sick in a couple of years. Oh man, and Shakutami. Oh, Shakutami. Shakutami was from 13 to 3. I was expecting to land at like pick number 7, honestly. And uh, the Flames Canadians... Actually, no, the Canadians didn't get screwed. They still won a lottery because they had... Uh, the. Oh my god, they had Medicine Hat's pick. Oh man... Hold on, wasn't Medicine... Medicine Hat's Vegas. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Stop the simulation for a second. Are you serious right now? Medicine Hat is the Vegas Golden Knights. That is the same, like, equivalent to... The, they just won the cup and then tank it and finish, like, worst in the league and land Montreal a number two pick. Are you serious right now? <laughs> okay. So anyways, guys, we got the number one overall pick. We finally win a lottery. And Charlie K is going to be ours. There's no question about it. I'm not going to select anybody else. I don't care if he's going to be lower rated than them. I don't care. We're taking Charlie K. We have a system to build around here now for forwards anyways. Um, there's a franchise goalie here too in Quincy Torres. Um, I was going to, you know enlighten you guys on that eventually and uh no we're not taking quincy Torres. as much as i want to we drafted some great goalies somebody else is gonna get a freaking amazing franchise goalie we have to take charlie k simply because we have jason k in the system already and a pair of high elite brothers is essentially the sedines 2.0 i i'm i'm blown away i'm so happy we finally won a lottery that is just that never happens that is awesome so anyways, guys, that's where we're going to wrap this video up. If you did enjoy this extended episode, did it a bit longer than we normally would, please go down below, smash that like button. It only takes a second, really helps out the channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, please go do so. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell as well. But anyways, guys, that's where we're going to wrap it up. This is Etanios signing out and see ya.